What's up? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. This is Matt, and today we work a problem from the construction breadth section of the Civil PE exam. The question asks, which of the following should be included in a stormwater pollution prevention plan, or SWPPP? Then we're given four options, and then each of the answer choices includes different combinations of the four options. So at the time of this recording, we're using PE Reference Handbook version 1.2. And if we look in the handbook for the stormwater pollution prevention plan or SWIP, we don't see anything in the construction section of the handbook included. We might look at the water resources section as well, thinking, oh, well, you know, it's a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Maybe stormwater falls within water resources. And unfortunately, we don't see anything about the SWIP anywhere in the PE reference handbook. And this is one of those times and an example of a topic that the civil PE exam expects the test taker to know coming into the exam and have a, a general high-level knowledge of what a stormwater pollution prevention plan is. So if we look at all of these options, let's discuss each one. So the stormwater pollution prevention plan, or SWIP, the goal of the plan is to identify potential sources of stormwater pollution on construction sites and then what we're going to do is implement best management practices, which are basically techniques that are going to be used to control the stormwater runoff coming from the site and reduce the likelihood of potential pollution and contamination of the surrounding environment and waterways in the surrounding community during construction. So we already addressed option one in the sense that we said it's an identification of potential sources of stormwater pollution on the construction site. We can't know what we're going to be controlling if we don't know what we're controlling. So we first need to identify those. So option one is a valid choice. Option two discusses a copy of the contract and all subcontracts related to the work occurring on site. Well, that might be useful for other areas in construction, but this question asks us specifically what should be included in the stormwater pollution prevention plan. So let's remain in the scope of the stormwater pollution prevention plan and using that methodology, we eliminate answer choice two. Answer choice three, we touched on it earlier. We talked about the pollution prevention plan stormwater should also include best management practices or techniques that would reduce pollutants in the stormwater discharges from the site and reduce the risk of contamination to the surrounding waterways in the area. So option three is a valid choice. The stormwater pollution prevention plan also must include a log and that log is going to document inspection procedures, how often inspections occur or the frequency at which they occur, and also will note any deficiencies found during each inspection. It may also include modifications to the stormwater pollution prevention plan to address better ways of doing things or to make changes as the site um, is developed further or different discoveries are made or other changes are made on site. The stormwater pollution prevention plan should be modified to update any changes or improvements that are made. So option four is a valid choice. So reviewing everything we dis discussed, option one is valid, option three is valid, and option four is valid. Looking at the answer choices, that matches with answer choice D, one, three, and four. So if you're looking for more practice with your civil PE exam review, head on over to civilengineeringacademy.com and check out our ultimate civil PE breadth and depth review courses, and we'll see you there.